This might just be the most important supplement for endurance athletes ever, and it's probably something that you've never heard of. Until today, motherfuckers. For decades now, we have been sold a lie. It's one of the biggest scams in the world and it's everywhere. And you'll find this stuff everywhere. Supermarkets, chemists, you name the shop and you'll find it. And I'm fucking sick of it. Multivitamins, look, I get it. Take a pill, be healthier, all is good run faster, live longer, it all makes sense to me. But there's a massive industry that's selling supplements and multivitamins that you consume, piss out 30 seconds later and get that nice, lovely placebo effect. Amazing. And we've all fallen for it. I know I have. I used to drink this disgusting green powder like every day thinking that the 400 different ingredients from root extracts and stuff tropical stuff from the rainforest was gonna help me run faster. But in the end, it's all just marketing and actually, it does nothing. And there are many brands out there that try to sell you this green crap. I know the ones and so do you and it's so expensive. It's rank, like literally just eat your vegetables. It doesn't even mix with water, ugh. This tastes horrible, just as I remember. And people are paying $60 per month for this. What the hell? But realistically, unless you're eating like McDonald's for every single meal a day, providing that you're eating enough food to support your training, you're probably gonna be hitting all of your vitamins and minerals pretty consistently every day. Except for one. Because without vitamin B12, you will have zero fitness. None at all. Nothing. Getting up a flight of stairs will send you anaerobic and getting out of bed will wipe you out completely for the rest of the day. And forget running. This came to my attention after I read the book, Could It Be B12? The Invisible Epidemic. Scary subtitle. This book talked about the deficiency of B12 across the population and all of the hundreds of different issues that actually cause it. Though they didn't talk about smashing your 5K PB. Though I think it's heavily implied. Now most of you watching this video have probably never even thought about B12 and never even got tested. I guarantee you $5 that you've never had a B12 blood test. Even though only a slight deficiency can heavily impact your training. And you haven't even checked. Now the symptoms of B12 deficiency can be fatigue and lethargy. And you can even start to turn yellow. F*** that. Nah, but seriously, if you've plateaued in your training and you're not getting any faster and you feel fatigued all the time and you're also a moody asshole, I have one question for you. Could it be B12? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. B12 is a magical thing that's involved in a million different processes throughout your body, including helping you run really fast. B12 is actually created in the dirt by bacteria. And when we grow vegetables and stuff like that in the ground, that B12 dirt gets covered all over the vegetables. And we or animals eat those vegetables and get those trace amounts of B12 in our bodies. Long story short, buy organic vegetables and stop washing all the dirt off it, God. But anyways, there's actually two different processes that I think I remember from university in biochemistry that help us to get these endurance adaptions. Actually, I think I have the book around here somewhere. Wow, what a throwback. Man, I remember doing my biochemistry exam and having every single, well, not every single, basically every single chemical pathway pasted onto my wall for some reason. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ, that right there. But I passed, so it helped. Um, anyways, the two chemical pathways. Ah, mm. 
All right, process number one, the methionine pathway. This pathway involves the use of the enzyme homocysteine transferase to convert homocysteine to methionine. Pretty riveting stuff, I know. It also helps to convert methyl tetrahydrofolate into normal tetrahydrofolate. Now this tetrahydrofolate is a really important cofactor for making DNA. But most importantly for this video, red blood cells. All of these processes cannot occur without this tetrahydrofolate molecule and also without B12. Now important process number two, if you can say this word five times in a row really fast, that's a guaranteed PB. Methyl melanol coa mutase, methyl melanol coa mutase, methyl melanol coa mutase, methyl melanol coa Ah! This enzyme converts methyl melanol coa to succinyl coa. Now this product succinyl coa is really important and it's used in the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle as some people call it. Krebs sounds cooler though. The Krebs cycle is where all of our aerobic metabolism takes place in the cells of our body to produce energy. And once again, without B12, you cannot provide enough succinyl coa to actually power this citric acid cycle. And so once again, no PBs. Look at me. Mum would be so proud. I'm finally putting my education to use. So B12 is critical for red blood cell production and overall aerobic metabolism. Basically, if you want to get fast, you're going to need B12. But how much? Well, it seems like from the reading that I've been doing, there's a strong relationship between B12 levels and hemoglobin. There's actually a B12 sweet spot where you can get the most hemoglobin bang for your buck. Hemoglobin levels basically represent how aerobically fit you are because the higher your hemoglobin is, the more oxygen carrying capacity your body has to deliver the oxygen from the lungs to the working muscles. But I've already done a really in-depth video on hemoglobin and iron, so go check out that video. I'll put it up here somewhere. But basically, hemoglobin equals speed. And as you can see, right around that 600 to 1,000 picograms per milliliter of blood seems to maximize your hemoglobin saturation, meaning that taking any more wouldn't give you any more benefit, and taking less than that is gonna leave some hemoglobin on the table. So to be able to use all of the iron in your body to help boost your hemoglobin levels and impress your mates at some local 5k, you're gonna need a lot of B12, specifically 600 to 1000 micrograms in your blood at all times. It's simple, right? But how? Good question. Step one is to go get blood tests. Check your B12 levels, your folate levels, your iron stores, and also your hemoglobin. But how do you increase your levels? So here's my take on it. Tablets are gonna give you an unknown percentage of improvement in your B12 levels, whereas injections are gonna give you 100% improvements in your B12 levels. So that's why I take injections. Like I said at the start of the video, supplementing with vitamins and minerals without actually having any evidence, talking to your doctor or getting blood tests is completely stupid and pointless and a waste of time. And from my own experience in the past, I found that six to eight weeks was long enough between blood tests for my hemoglobin to actually improve without changing any of my training just by implementing some smarter supplement strategies. It's free speed basically, because here's what I think, right? There's no point in hammering the training and doing all these fancy workouts and buying $300 shoes and spending $300 on races and then spending another $300 on your stupid sore running kit and then not just taking the time to simply get a blood test and determine whether your fitness is actually getting tanked by a supplement that you didn't even know existed. So just go get checked. Peace.